Hello, my name is George Burden. I am with the Tesla Scientific Foundation, a board member, and uh, we are here today to uh, witness uh, the firing of a uh, unusual Tesla coil, which is horizontal, uh, created by Leslie Baird, who is an expert in Tesla uh, scientific uh, technology and has been working on this for many, many years. And uh, we're going to witness something that uh, we haven't seen in a long time, and it's probably the largest Tesla coil in private hands uh, in, in the United States uh, at, at the present time. Uh, Leslie Baird has been experimenting with science of electricity and magnetism as well as other scientific phenomena since childhood, most likely from her ancestral calling as the descendant of Michael Faraday, the English 19th century scientist and eminent member of the Royal Society of London. Though Michael Faraday had no children, Leslie is a direct descendant of his uncle. Faraday is known for his many experimental discoveries regarding electricity and magnetism. Most important is the discovery of induction that produced the first electric motor attributed to Faraday. Uh, Leslie has studied at various institutions, including MIT, where an illness caused her withdrawal. In her younger years, Leslie completed, working, uh, completed a working atom smasher. What caused your interest uh, in Nikola Tesla's work that led you to build one to two million volt uh, Tesla coil? It started when I was six, and my father brought home this, one of these magnetron magnets, and I, I, it set off all kinds of bells and whistles in my head. Here was an inanimate object that would take things away from you and not give them back. And you could feel it pulling, but you couldn't see how. And I knew I had to, I had to find out how. This coil seems to be different than most that I've seen. Leslie, your Tesla coil is horizontal. Yeah and not vertical like most uh, constructed Tesla coils. Is, is, uh, is there a reason for this particular design? Well, I thought I could take Tesla's word for the, uh, the work that he did, <laughs> and I decided I wasn't going to duplicate that. It wasn't worth the, my time, and so I wanted to build. This is a half wavelength machine. It's a little higher frequency than the others, and it's got a lot of advantages. How do I know? If, I mean, how do you how do you explain the half wavelength? I mean, uh, I don't it's, understand that. The coupling is is 0.6. It's a strong coupling, and it, it it couples the entire coil, and it ends up the the, the voltage that goes you know alternates between the two sides. A this is a half wavelength, a quarter wavelength machine would have one end grounded. It's more efficient and it allows me to, to study the sparks better, to direct the sparks and study the behavior. I mostly built this coil so that I could have experience with hundreds of millions of watts before I went into the billion watt range. From what I learned on this coil, I was able to develop a phase array pulse generators that uh, just get up into that range of, of energies. I was able to figure out imagine, how to do that. Imagine you're still working on that. that uh... Yeah, I have been. <laughs> Okay. Uh, what field in your scientific experiments with electricity and magnetism do you consider your main areas of expertise and interest? In the past, you have mentioned Paul Drude and his works, and how does this work? Uh, how, how does his work relate to yours? Paul Drude was the only person to start publishing papers on the work of Tesla, and my area of expert, my interest, anyhow is on the, on the properties of space. And since modern science doesn't consider space to exist, it's a, I'm probably alone in my field. Current concepts don't, don't include space as, a, as having any properties. So then... Uh, you know, so you, you, I'm working with these high fields to, to distort the properties of space. What are your future aspirations and goals as such relates to physics of electricity and magnetism, or are there any areas of physics that you care to relate now? Oh, God. <laughs> it's a general question. Uh, and no, I don't want to talk about it. You don't even want to talk about it. All right. Uh, that's fine. Let's, uh, if we can, let's go to uh, the, the operation of this particular Tesla coil and how it, how it uh, starts okay. from the beginning and how the electricity actually gets here. If we can First go back to... First thing I have to do is okay. to raise this little switch here. That, that. No, I see. Oh, okay, so that 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 prevents a uh, that, that opens up the circuit. 
There could be a substantial energy left after the this, yeah after the Depending coil where it is in the in the cycle after the coil is charged. Sometimes you get nothing. And a lot of the times you get a bang. And, okay, uh, it could be lethal. And then the the wires come back from the Tesla coil I'll through go, these. Go. Okay, Thanks. I'll follow you. I put in a 200 amp service, so I run a substantial amount of the laboratory. These are two fuses that I put into this box, and the safety. Uh, if the house burns down and these fuses aren't in the box, then my laboratory had nothing to do with it. Uh, this is my power panel over here. Let's go over to your power panel. The, uh, Can we go over to your power current, panel? Yeah, oh, excuse me. Uh, let me show you, for instance, this is a uh, skip over around here. This is uh, a nice switch. I'm not connecting this in. This is a magnetic contactor. I'm trying to get in. That, uh, Oops. Okay. I was out of I'm going to get the hand down there. Go ahead. That, that actually fires this solenoid, which fires this. Okay. Which is, uh, you know, without burning out nice switches and things. Uh, when I run it, they put that in the operation. The next thing is there's a, there is a gap, a uh, spark gap on that thing. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to fire it up, are you? No, no, I'm not. Okay. Well, actually, before we fire the test of okay. oil, uh, it is uh, advisable to switch cameras because this camera has a computer which may be affected by the magnetic uh, uh, resonance of, of the coil. Okay, from this panel, the current runs into that transformer. That's the large transformer over there with the uh, large insulators. This is 40,000 volts. What, what's inside that uh, transformer, uh, <laughs> if you could mention what was inside? I went down to the scrappers in Philadelphia and I bought 400 pounds of grain ore and silicon seal. I didn't use it all, but, and uh, 80 pounds of copper wire and I began winding. It took me about a month. Uh, from there, that is a full wave rectifier with uh, made of right. uh, 401 thousand volt diodes all bypass passed with a uh, that, that, uh, that, that machine there down. right there in plexiglass right in the each middle. one of those columns is a series of okay. diodes that'll, that'll, that'll handle a hundred thousand volts at a hundred thousand watts and uh, in the middle of choke coils to prevent uh, any if the high frequency from the Tesla coil should jump from the secondary to the primary coil it would run back to this thing and blow out all those diodes. The next thing it goes <coughs> is a is a water resistor. Uh, I had to it has to be able to handle the power, and it has to be able to handle. It has to, you have to, two two water resistors yeah, there. Two water resistors. One is the, has the blue these, uh, these, water these in it, and the other tanks. one in the back. And, and they have a very small amount of electrolyte in them, to, that so that I titrated to forty thousand ohms to limit the power from this to one amp ma maximum. And from there, it goes through these. PVC but before that, Leslie, just one minute. Uh, <clears throat> the this this transformer steps up the original yeah, power takes from the, the takes two two twenty two forty volts and steps it up to forty thousand volts. Okay. Wow. And uh, this is a set of resistors that feed the power of the meter on the uh, on the power panel, tell me how many volts I got. And this is another set of resistors that tells that's AC. This tells me the DC voltage. And uh, from there, they go into this PVC. This PVC, uh, PVC pipe. And they're piped over to the bottom of the uh, Tesla coil, where they connect the uh, basic. Well, it's hard to see. <laughs> they connect a bunch of things. They, they connect the spark gap. To Could the, you show uh, us where the spark <coughs> gap is? Yeah, this is a safety gap to make sure that it's not to my. That if, it's, if there's a voltage overlap, that'll fire before my capacitors explode. <laughs> and. Uh, this is a spark gap. This is, goes around 3,000 RPM, and it's designed to blow out the, uh, the spark soon after it's, it's been created. And what that does is it keeps the voltage level high. That the, uh, if you let it just, just oscillate, it'll, it'll wind down, it'll radiate all, away all of its power. And so you want to keep it high so that, so that it fires again. So you keep the, the voltage more also, or less constant. Also, uh, behind the uh, Tesla <coughs> coil are two Gray boxes uh, and, and what those are, what those are, those? are uh, those are standard power factor capacitors that uh, that handle the voltage and they they are uh, 
<clears throat> they, they charge up to 40,000 volts, these right two, there. yeah. <laughs> and that, uh, that's the thing, that, and that, trans, that energy transmits to this secondary coil. The secondary coil is the, the smaller coil in the center, but it's large in terms of the number of turns. And it steps up. To How many volts. turns do you think they're in there? I've roughly? forgotten the number. <laughs> well, and turn that little secondary light on. So but the uh, is a special <laughs> way that you <coughs> you turn that by you turn those wires. I, I wound it by hand. You wound it by hand, Over and then you coated days. it with. Uh, then it's, something. it's sunk in orange shellac, which is important. The white shellac is a high dielectric constant. And would, uh, it's not as satisfactory as the as the orange. There's a possibility of marking I've there. I've got three gallons of, uh, of, of shellac on that. Needs right. another coat. <laughs> now these <clears throat> armatures out here are, are unusual. Uh, I've never seen anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, they set the gap and then, you know, they give it a little bit of control. <clears throat> if I widen them too far, it starts jumping all over the place. So that's set at a nice safe distance where it'll jump from here to here and set it everywhere. And is that the reason you have this uh, other insulator here, which is... This, I had a, a brick column here that, uh, and sparks were jumping out of the column because it was conductive and, and blowing holes in the back of my coil. And so I replaced the brick column with this porcelain insulator. I noticed also that these, uh, 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 what would you call these, elect Electrode, the gap. It's just an electrode, I guess. Electrode, and then it, uh, they all come to a point like a lightning rod. Uh, most Tesla coils have a sphere or something that capacitance at the end, and it makes it more continuous. I was interested in the voltage, and I wanted. You know, I was interested in it, and it, I didn't want the capacitance. Okay. So, is there anything else that you might want to add about your Tesla coil that <laughs> is different than? Uh, Let's say any other Tesla coil. Lots of stuff. Of? I mean, it, it, this is a whole lot of innovative ideas. You know, over a period of years, it took me ten years to build it and get this tuned and get it the way I want. You know, and when you say tuned, what do you mean by tuned? Yeah, it has to resonate properly. Uh, before I got it resonating, there were sparks jumping all up and down the side of the coil. When I got it resonating properly, there was none of that. So this took so a lot of work. Takes, yeah, a it's, lot of time. It's a, you know, it's a labor of love, and it's a took a long time. That's the way knowledge is. You've you got to learn all this stuff. That's the wonderful. only way to learn about it is by it's doing it. It's absolutely wonderful. You know, can't learn this in school. <laughs> can't learn it in school. You've got to actually do the yeah. do the experiment. Uh, so. Today uh, we are going to observe uh, your hand-built experimental uh, Tesla coil in operation. One million volts. I understand at this point it could be two million, but you've cut it down to one million for some reason. Uh, horizontal Tesla coil. Let's proceed with the demonstration. This goes in. This goes on. Right for here. It is that absolutely is awesome. <laughs> Anybody have a reaction here? That's what are you? Powerful. That thing is loud. It is sparking all over the place. God, can you imagine what Tesla did to his audiences back in the 1800s? Smell, <laughs> Smell the ozone. 
Oh my God. Is that what that is? Yeah, it's a lot louder than, I knew it would be loud, but it's a lot louder than I expected it to be. Why is it loud, Leslie? Is it splitting air molecules? Lightning makes a lot of noise. Tesla evidently spoke in, I believe it was 1893, on uh, some of his uh, projects in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the Franklin Institute, and they're going to celebrate that uh, celebration again. They're also in the educational field where they're going to uh, have people demonstrate Tesla coils to high school students and uh, to uh, students that may come to the Franklin Institute. Uh, the Tesla community, uh, as James mentioned, uh, he would invite them to uh, look at the site where the uh, script is and uh, invite their comments from the uh, Tesla uh, Science Foundation. And they would be, they'd be very welcome to have any comments. And I can guarantee you that uh, you will have comments because this is a very active group.